Welcome to Lunatic Astrology. I'm your astrologer, Lori Lothian. Today I'm talking about one of the luckiest, amazing little pieces of sky in the recent times, which is Jupiter in a trine to Venus. Well, both of them are in a sextile to an asteroid named Pan. This is happening on the 16th, 17th, and 18th, and 19th or so of the month. It's pretty exact on the 18th. Now, you're probably wondering where I am and why I've got sunglasses on because it's bright out here. Uh, and there's the camera. I'm having to use my phone because my laptop battery <laughs> is just decharged and I don't have not decharged but my laptop cord oh my god my laptop cord I left it at, I'm traveling and I'm in a, my sister's garden and I left my laptop cord at a prior destination so I'm trying to use my phone with a lapel mic so bear with me because this stupid selfie stick is a piece of junk okay so it's the best I've got on the traveling road with me so let's talk about this sky, guys. On the 18th, it's exact. You'll start to feel it on the 16th, 17th, and it's exciting. I like it a lot. I'm just going to try to prop you up against a freaking flower bed. Sorry. I'm just trying to dig the selfie stick into the soil, and this is so frustrating. I'm not going to start recording again. Okay, so basically, why I like this lucky vent in the sky. It's a lucky break, lucky this, lucky that, a Jupiter luck expansion and growth. He's in retrograde motion, but he's in fiery Aries. Venus in fiery Leo, quite the entitled queen, bringing in a stroke of luck. Now, it's going to be different for all of us how this luck arise, arises, especially given it forms a triangle called a mini grand trine in which both Jupiter and Venus from their fiery posts are sextiling Gemini placed seven degrees, by the way, of the asteroid pan for pandemic, yes, but also for pandemonium, also for getting into altered states of ecstatic consciousness where you're channeling the muse. So a lot to say about the pandemic here because I'm pretty sure we're going to see some big news coming out in the world, maybe even the United States around the 18th of the month for things such as like, let's let go of the vaccine mandates for people coming into our country and things like that. It's going to be a loosening, I think, I, I, I do think, of some kind of existing vaccine regulation. Now, why I think that in particular, just so you know, is that um, the Venus herself sitting at eight degrees of the sign of Leo and Jupiter at eight degrees of the sign of everyone's at eight degrees Aries, you know, and, and Pan at almost at seven degrees of Gemini. Um, in this flowing mini grand trine of sextiling, sextiling and trining everybody. Okay, so the dealio is, she's on a couple of asteroids, right? One of them is Ops, and Ops is the asteroid that is the wife of Saturn, and this is a representational asteroid for happiness and relief after times of hardship and pain. If the pandemic doesn't count, cut it, I don't know what else does. Also, he, she, Venus, is sitting on Varuna, the creator deity or god of ancient Hindu mythology that preceded the Shiva Shakti narrative and in fact later became Indra, like Indra's web. This is the god who's in charge of all kinds of stuff like the rainfall, the seasons, the sun moving across the horizon, created it, maintains it, you know, the whole idea. However, it's also the god of justice, law, human order, oaths, and contracts. So very likely things to do with legal agreements and you know a time of hardship coming to an end and happiness on the horizon makes me think pan sextiling venus ops varuna sextiling pan yeah also there's a sextile not sextile um there's a conjunction between venus and ops venus and um, Varuna, the creator god and the justice guy, but also she's connected to Persephone. And Persephone was taken captive by Pluto or Hades and abducted into the underworld. She, this could represent Venus bringing a benefic, positive healing energy with ops to a place in our life where we've all felt like we've been held captive, where we've been trashed and dunked into an underworld, whether it's economically, whether it's physically, whether it's with the pandemic of the last two years, all of those things feel like those things may come to an end around the 18th with some new announcements by either CDC or um, the Biden administration. Now, I'm using the U.S. as an example because honestly, Canada and the United States are only two countries left, really, who still have ma double vaccine mandate before you can enter the country unless you're a citizen. So, you know, I'm just thinking what's left. Everybody else is kind of like let loose those restrictions, so, truly, um, in the age of Omicron. So what else can I tell you guys? Uh, so uh, the idea here too is Jupiter is sitting on the asteroid Salacia. And I know this is tippy. I know that I'm crooked. 
And salacia has to do with misinformation, um, misrepresentation of facts as one of the meanings of salacia. So uh, there's a harmony and a flow and a correction maybe of something that looked like maybe misinformation, misrepresentation of facts. And here in Canada, we just had a big scandal. <laughs> the government was always going, Trudeau was going, um, <clears throat> we are basing our vaccine mandate policy on the best science possible as all he would ever say. And uh, what he did is he restricted all unvaccinating Canadians, six million of them, from traveling on any train or plane within the country between last October and finally it ended sometime in June. And like that, like no other country in the world, I think did that except for North Korea and China. So, you know, you know, we were up there, we were up there with the dictators. Um, so the big scandal that broke was that turns out the panel who put the travel mandates in place for domestic travel restrictions for unvaccinated Canadians were like uh, someone with a BA in English and a bunch of other sci non-scientists, no, no virologists, epidemiologists, not even any doctors. Okay, so like we just had that scandal break. But this is feeling harmonious harmonious. This is feeling positive. I hope this mic is working. Okay, as in some kind of relief. Now in each of our lives, this is a lucky break. And so I'm going to go through each sign. I had to make myself a little map, hey, because I can't look at my charts because I don't have the software, huh, astrological software in my phone. So I'm just going to talk to you today instead of telling you this. We're going to go through where the lucky break in your sky is showing up. Epicenter is the 18th, but honestly, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, all in the orb of some fruiting of some positive time of happiness, relief, something breaking through. And even though Jupiter's retrograde, he's still Jupiter. He's just moving very slowly at the eighth degree. And there's a possibility some of the yay vibe here could play out more directly when he is uh, moving in direct motion after November 24th. So there may be some also connection to later from what we're seeing in the sky now. Okay, so let's get going and talk about it all. And lastly, I want to say one more thing about the big picture before we go to all signs, is that um, Venus um, can be a woman, Jupiter can be justice, something breaking through with female legal matters like the Roe versus Wade story, um, which have some people upset, or uh, positive developments from a time of feeling captive or stuck in legal matters involving feminine, female issues, uh, things to do with art and beauty, or things to do with a female in the legal system storylines making headlines um, you do have the um the slip of the egyptian terms or the egyptian bounds in the chart and it's interesting to see how positive this placement is in the sense that venus is within her own bound in the sign of leo jupiter is sitting in the bound that belongs to what bound is he in he's in the bound of venus so he, it's kind of even though Jupiter's in the sign of Mars, Aries sign, he's got he's in the bound of Venus. So he's kind of got a little boss of Venus energy above him. And Pan himself is in the bound of Jupiter, expansion, justice, law. So don't forget pandemic, pandemonium, and also ecstatic states of revelry and losing oneself in a deep obsessive state of mind or consciousness, another Pan energy. Um, so we're going to go through all signs. Let's roll. Whew. Aries, sun, moon, and rising sign. This is going to be an energy where Venus is sitting in your fifth house of romance and children and creativity. She really loves it. It's a house of her joy in fiery, fiery Leo. And she is making a lovely trine energy to retrograde Jupiter at eight degrees of Aries. And of course, that's in the house of you. Yes, you are feeling magnanimous, spacious, big, larger than life, uh, the king of your castle. Yes. It's a retrograde time. Some of the bigness is slowing down. You're kind of going inward. You're looking for your inner teacher. But now Venus from the fifth house says, want to play? <laughs> Should we go out and have some fun? Um, how about a money break in a lottery ticket? Why? Because the fifth house is speculative wins and lotteries are part of it. Gaming wins, casinos, horse races, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm really here. It's hard for me to see because it's bright out here. And um, what else can I tell you? Um, yeah, so you could win money basically, or you could win at the casino, or you could win a lottery, or you could get one of your speculative investments paying off. Now, let me say, don't do any gambling because I'm mentioning this, right? Like, don't go oh, break your bank over gambling, but just saying, some luck can befall you. Your children could have some good news luck that lights your day up or your days up around that time frame. Uh, you might also find that um, romance that is picking up speed uh, or has been or will be is really enchanting you during the 16th, 17th, 18th kind of vibe. Um, 19th and you might also find that if you're single 
this could start a romance. Venus loves to bring on the love and pleasure, fun and joy and sexuality in the fifth house. She likes to have a good romp and all of a sudden she is in a trine to your identity. Now we have that um, sextile between both of the benefics, Jupiter and Venus, to Pan in Gemini. Now, you know, Pan can be that place of ecstatic consciousness and deep focus, right? Almost going into like a frenzied revelry of some kind. And because this is your third house, if you are a, a, uh, an Aries for whom things like writing or um, online world stuff, um, especially social media platforms, your, your website, or maybe selling things, or finally even things to do with your siblings, trips and travel, that's where Pan is sitting, you could lead to some really joyful events and times, especially filled with intense sort of revelry. It feels like a real party, like the, you know, the Bacchanesian, Dionysian energies are here, the Bacchanalia, you know, kind of an over the top vibe. Anyway, uh, it could involve a family member like a sibling or a trip. Now, funny enough, I got Aries, Sun and Moon traveling with my sister, uh, and we'll be arriving in Vancouver together during the middle of this intense 17th and 18th. I don't know what that means. Maybe we're going to bust open some champagne when we arrive and we'll just go crazy. But third house things can also mean breakthroughs in writing, breakthroughs in online stuff where you go into a deep focus during this week and something breaks through. Moving forward, Taurus, sun, moon, rising, sign. Well, Venus in Leo is moving through where? Your natal fourth house. And this is a place in your sky where you'd put your roots down. It's your home, your apartment, your nest, the house of your mother, the house of your family of origin, the house of your ancestors. It's also a place of your private life that you keep away from the public. You're having pleasures and joy at home as Venus has been moving through Leo. And now she's at the eighth degree. One, two, three. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. I'm starting over with you guys. I had to cut this video because I'm not using my charts. I'm using a bunch of pieces of paper and I'm not like, that's not how I operate. I'm a visual person. So basically uh, you have this Venus in the house of your private life, your domestic life, your apartment, your home, your, your sanctuary. And you might be feeling like you've been very much wanting to beautify your home and decorate it as she's been going through this part of the sky since about September 5th or so. And at the eighth degree then, right? Um, I mean, sorry, September, I mean, <laughs> August. Anyway, never mind. So she's gonna be at the eighth degree and she's going to be in a relationship from your house of home where she wants to beautify shit. <laughs> she's going to be loving up Jupiter and Jupiter is sitting in your 12th house. Now, it's an interesting placement because it could offer up an opportunity for money to come through PayPal and Stripe accounts or foreign barter and trade that helps you work on beautifying your home. But it's also the house of your inner life, your unconscious, your dreams at night, your kind of meditative reveries, your self undoing. What kind of beauty, what kind of art, what kind of things are going on in your home that are helping you uh, deal up, up some of your undoing and self-sabotage? You may also plan a trip away from home during the 17th, 18th, 19th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, because foreign travel, Jupiter likes to get away off to foreign lands for sanctuaries when he's in the 12th house. And this is Venus in the fourth house, you know, doing planning, whatever you do in your private life. With Pan, the pandemonium, but also the ecstasy, the revelry, the deep obsessive states of ecstatic consciousness <laughs> happening to exist in your second house, right? He's at seven degrees there during this week's you know, three day yay with a peak around the 18th. Well, this is a place of your voice, your earnings and your calling, your money and your, your possessions. Um, this is all very flowing and positive. You may take possession of something that gives you great ecstatic joy and or that something that is connected to money and earnings. So you could get a bonus money at work, you could get a raise, but with Pan there, it feels like, oh yeah, you're gonna hit this sort of like, yay me, let's have a party over this money uptake for you Taurus, sun, moon and rising signs. Sometimes, by the way, Jupiter in the 12th house can bring money from investments but money from banks loans and mortgages because of his trying to the eighth house so keep that in mind also some of you Tauruses may get some money coming to you that you are able to leverage during this lucky transit moving forward this is just a quickie for all signs Gemini Sun Moon rising sign well there is the movement of the planet Venus through your third house, which feels to you usually like you want to have fun in your neighborhood. A lot of you Gemini rising in particular will want to go out and have, go to the bar, go to the restaurant, go to the movie theater, go to the event, go to the art gallery. You're just going to take a lot of 
pleasure in your local environment or with your aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, or because you have chosen to travel for leisure, pleasure, and fun. So this is what's happening for the Gemini rising and sun and moon secondarily. But then you get this trine energy to Jupiter. Jupiter is luck, opportunity, expansion, and growth from the 11th house of social groups, friends, friendships, and networks of belonging. And you're expanding it there. You're growing your groups of belonging. Friends are love, loving you, trying to help you, giving you favors. I don't even know if I'm looking at the camera. You know what? I'm probably not because, you know, honestly, I think the camera's over here. Hi, guys. It's so awkward to do this on my phone. I can't even begin to tell you. So if I've been looking off to the side, I apologize anyway. Got my sunglasses on anyway. So I would say for you guys, this is a very auspicious, auspicious thing. Why? Because Jupiter is in the house of his joy, the 11th house. Venus is really, you know, ambling through Leo, full of vim and vigor um, in your third house. This could really be um, a pop in popularity for you if you use the online social media world as well. You could have a, a bit of a popular hit on something you produce or put out into the online world. Also, you have this pan for where you want to have an ecstatic state of deep focus and maybe even ecstatic revelry, you have this pan energy happening in the house of you. Um, now pan is an asteroid, right? And so he's a minor asteroid, but he is in a tight conjunction, I mean a tight <laughs> semi-sextile to Venus and Jupiter. I mean sextile to Venus and Jupiter. And for you, this can mean that you really are feeling at some level like you really want to really own this deep ecstatic revelry. You really want to own inside of you a sense of like more than pleasure, more than joy, but some kind of, you know, ecstasy within yourself as you go out to enjoy the travel or the local neighborhood with the company of groups of belonging. So look for that this week. That's like the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th kind of vibe. All right, um, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. I think it's going to rain here. Like seriously, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign. You're going to experience this Venus transit through your house of money, earnings, and possessions. So Venus is loving you up there. If you wanted a bonus, a raise, or more money flowing into your earnings, this is where it's going to happen. And with these earnings, I swear, Jupiter wants to expand them. He wants to blow it up, make your possessions bigger, get a bigger car, your better, a better sofa, a nicer home, get a bigger raise get more money through your job, ask for more money from your clients, okay. And so Jupiter is doing this loving up, trying to expand the Venus money story for you in the middle of this week, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th kind of thing, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th of the month of August. And where he's doing this blowing it all up from is your career house. So for most of you, Cancer Risings, your 10th house of reputation and career is where the juice is. This is where things are taken off. Um, so it's your reputation's expanding, your money's going with it, your career is going up and blowing up and you're getting more powerful and your possessions and money is going with it. And it can look like buying a bigger possession, a better possession or something like that already. And you're really in the, on the flow in a roll with it. Just a side note about that pan for ecstatic revelry in your 12th house. Honestly, your dreams at night, a, a deep focus on your meditative resources, on the idea of your inner life, you know, really pulling the, the um, deeper into you from the like more causal realm of your life to really create what you want in this week ahead. Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign, this energy of Venus ambling through the first deacon of the sign of first 10 degrees of the sign of um, <laughs> Leo is in the house of you. <laughs> so you are more persuasive, charismatic, popular, pretty and handsome. Uh, get your hair done, get your nails done, change your wardrobe, um, beautify up. Also, you know, you can, you can persuade with ease. You can convince people to do what you want if you are charming and want to ladle on the charm, seduction and persuasion, you've got it. So you've got this flow with Venus in the house of you and there's bugs around me now. And Jupiter from your ninth house of your Dharma, your purpose, your calling, uh, the energy of, you know, higher ups in education or law, it's blessing you. So legal favors flow towards you 
with great goodness this week, higher educational things work in your favor, trips to foreign lands and travel or visas work in your favor. You're just kind of on your game and it's ba basically a very strong placement when Jupiter's going through that house and looking over at Venus in your first because it does kind of flow an energy uh, that will bring you more in touch with your passion, with your manifestations, with what you want in life, with your true path and calling. With Pan for pandemic but also pandemonium and also the deep revelry and focus that you're capable of in something that you brings you a greater sense of ecstasy, this is your 11th house and this can mean that being in groups of belonging and socializing with others or adding yourself to a group, there you are, a group of belonging, can really up your game. I'm going to pretend to look at the camera today. And this can work in your favor because it means also that where you can receive a bit of revelry in your life is in larger groups. It's not a solo time for you this week. It's time to get out there and have some fun with others and it will support you feeling good all around about your life. And uh, I have a Cancer Rising sister, a Leo, a Leo Sun sister, traveling with and believe me, she's going to be partaying with me and my people back in Vancouver. Alrighty, moving on to Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. So in your life, Virgos, you have this moving Venus story once a year kind of vibe. Right now, she's moving through Leo, and that's a good place because she's in the place of your deeper uh, wishes and dreams for your like your own self undoing yes your 12th house but kind of it's like this sort of like hotbed of imprinting what you might really truly want in life and what's interesting about that 12th house like the Akashic records are there and past lives are there it's also a house where you can undo yourself you know addictions self-defeating habits bad patterns negative beliefs about yourself and Venus is but benefic so she's trying to sweeten it up in there trying to bring some harmony there trying to bonify it make it less intense she'll help you maybe see where you're overdoing something the vape the nicotine the the weed the wine whatever so that you can let it go now she could just cause you to do more of that stuff but with Jupiter I think it's going to be a blessing time for you to let go of some of those things and release yourself Virgo people from any of those uh, negative patterns habits and addictions that you may be going through and Ven and Venus you know she will work with that <laughs> Jupiter in your eighth house to do that to bring it for you now, Jupiter in the eighth house, okay, this is a placement, of, it's called the inheritance or bequeathment transit, but it also can mean getting bank loans or money or leveraged money or your spouse makes a lot more money. So money's starting to flow here. This is a Jupiter story for you as he moves through Aries till next May minus a hiatus later in the year. So you're kind of getting more money and money, chunks of money coming to you. Well, this could be that because, you know, the 12th house is backroom deals or negotiations or foreign lands or even PayPal Stripe. And Jupiter is like, yeah, expanding potential wealth for you. So there may be a bit of a money yay you moment around the 18th or 17th, 18th, 19th of this week ahead <laughs> of August. Alrighty. And then Pan, where you can go into a deeper state of revelry, int int uh, intensity and focus, is in that career space and your reputation. This is a place where you can put a lot of intensity into that part of your sky, really activating it, really working it in some way. And you're going to be able to do it in a way that could also amplify your wealth, okay? And put you in a better place with your own self and doing so that you don't have negative habits and addictions continually undoing you. Can't know if I need my sunglasses or not because the clouds keep shifting to sun and light. Okay. Moving forward to Libra, Libra Sun, Libra Moon, Rising Sign, Folk. Well, Venus is moving through your 11th house of friendships. Now, this is a good time this week for you to have more fun with your friends and to hang out with large groups of people that you enjoy, to join new groups of belonging, to find more friendships with the women, the sisters, the sisterhood. Yay. And yet, at the same time, Jupiter wants to expand all of that. He's in a trine to all of that. He's like blowing it up, making it larger Libras. And that blowing up is from your seventh house. Now, your seventh house is other people. It's your clients, your marketplace, your audience for your work and your progress, the things you sell and buy and put into the world, 10th from 10th. But it's also your significant other business or love. And so this can look a lot like a week for some Libras to go party hard with or have some fun with friends and include your significant other. Have a really good time. Now there is some luck here. If you want to, if you need a lucky break regarding contractual legal matters, where this uh, is sitting, the seventh house is very much about that. And so you could find yourself having a breakthrough in a legal contractual agreement or matter that's very fortunate and lucky for you. And at the same time, um, maybe in November on the third week of November some of this may come back to you for some reason just because that's when when the direct motion of Jupiter happens so it could have a further import down the road in those legal affairs 
and uh, pan for you know where you put ecstatic revelry deep intense focus in some area of your life well pan is sitting in your ninth house now if you're a writer or book into the book publishing world this is yay you if you're in the academia world this is yay you you go to school you're a professor or a student in higher learning or if you have plans for deep for trap trips and travel <laughs> you're going to have some kind of deep focus ecstatic revelry in this part of your sky it looks really exciting but it's really just this week right it's just being topped off this week if pandemic restrictions have kept you from traveling for some reason because you're not doubly vaccinated or quadruply vaccinated or whatever this could be relief in that area for some of you Libras and finally this is the house of the father in Vedic astrology you may receive some blessings from your father or a father like figure someone in authority that's going to come your way during this 17th 18th 19th 16th 17th 18th 19th of this week Let's keep going and talk about um, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Sign. Venus is moving through your 10th house of reputation and career, purpose and focus, ambitions, how you want to succeed. That 10th house makes, uh, it gets very happy when Venus goes there. It often looks like promotions, advancements, raises, uh, favors, getting uh, employee of the month, you know, that kind of deal. Like you get loved up here when Venus is in the 10th house. And women in your workplace or colleagues in your workplace also will be favorable towards you during this week around, yes, I said it before, 16th to the 19th of the month with more intensity on the 18th. Jupiter is expanding what Venus is up to, making it larger than life and making it luckier. And that's really good, right? Uh, <laughs> And so that lucky vibe is coming from your sixth house of the workplace, of the work routines, the collegiate co-worker spaces, um, your health, your health protocols, your work, your work routine. So this is definitely for a lot of Scorpios, a huge bonus points on the life game board regarding lucky developments in your work, in your career. And again, it can be any of the things I said, promotions, advancements, etc expansion in some way um, with a pandemic element or pan for a intensity of focus he's in your eighth house now this is a place where you go into your t quiet secrets your deep sorcery and magic this is also wealth and money that you can get from banks and mortgages and inheritances now I, I don't know with an intensity here and focus with pan receiving the sextile from Jupiter in the career house Jupiter in the workhouse and Venus in the career house. I mean, it could out picture as uh, some kind of ability to get a chunk of money basically from your workplace. And it's going to be very exciting and very intense, something like that, like a, a one-time payout bonus or something like that. All right, moving forward. Uh, Sagittarius Sun Moon and rising sign the ninth house is where Venus is traveling this is the house of travel trips in foreign lands this is court cases and situations to do with legal affairs where judges are in effect this is higher education and book publishing just a few things to name your belief your faith in life Venus here gives you luck bonifies it makes everything better up there so all those themes are getting Venus love up okay and you could travel with a friend who's a woman you could find love and travel in a foreign land that kind of thing Sag is and if you're a single Sag yeah meeting your love of your life in a foreign land Jupiter expands that makes it larger than life from your fifth house of romance of sexuality Jupiter here is trying to bring you babies if you want babies and you're a Sag who wants to get pregnant or your spouse does whoa you yeah this is very good energy and so you can see that babies are possible here but also just an expansion energetically of romance and love and bounty and fun and joy connected to trips to foreign lands educational things if you are a writer this is EAU because Jupiter in your fifth in the house of the muse on fire just a lucky house anyway and Venus in the ninth house could lead to an agent a book deal a woman female in the publishing industry looking favorably upon you uh, expansion of your creativity uh, leading to a book deal I don't know things like that you got to make these things up if you're in an academic setting your professor loves you up and gives you an assignment or something that looks like the most exciting creative thing you've ever done pan for pandemic but also pandemonium and also intense ecstatic revelry and deep focus in some area well this pan energy he's sitting um, as he is prone to do, uh, in a um, relationship to Jupiter and Venus is flowing, right? That's why we're talking about it. It's a sextile. But in your chart, he's sitting in your 
seventh house. Now, this is your marriage partner or your significant committed relationship or business partnerships. If you're in a committed relationship with that five, fifth house having Jupiter energy and pan and ecstatic revelry in your seventh, you just might be having the best sex ever or hugely romantic and intense focus on the one you're with or their focus on you. Um, so it feels like, yay, you know, feels good. And again, maybe some of it involves uh, foreign lands, travel trips, and things that are ninth house getaways in this week ahead. Alrighty, moving forward, Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign. For Capricorns, this energy of Venus moving through your eighth house, a money goddess in a money house, it's money. So you're definitely looking at some greater prosperity this week ahead, Capricorn, especially on the 16th to the 19th of the month. And then, you know, Jupiter wants to blow it up from the fourth house. So some of this expanding prosperity can be getting a, a, a new lease, a better rent, a lower rent, a, a, a cool mortgage, selling a home, buying a home, because Jupiter in the eighth can allow you to leverage loans and other people's money. And yeah, why not? <laughs> Did I say that right? Because I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, Jupiter in the fourth house, I'm sorry, and Venus in the eighth. Good for money leveraging to do with home, land, property, and real estate. Also Capricorns, you have Pan, this intense ecstatic focus god energy who is flowing towards Venus and Jupiter and doing that flowing sextile energy from your house of work habits and health habits and health routines and health and getting rid of sick, sickness. <laughs> and there's an intense focus there. So it's going to flow in a lot of ways, whatever's going on in that fourth house towards an opening towards better health. Now, because things that are hidden from view, that are like out of your viewpoint, they're secretive. And women, secrets are, that are, are hidden from your view, held by a female, can be revealed during this week ahead. But it improves your health, it's better for your work, and it has significant positive impact on your domestic, private, home life. Jupiter's trying to make your home life better, not worse. He's trying to expand it. A lot of people with Jupiter going through the fourth house get a bigger, new, better, newer home, but they also like make a bigger home, you know, like uh, add an, an addition or something like that. Trying to bring some more joy in your home, some pleasure, some enjoyment. Jupiter can bring enjoyment in your home life and Venus is saying, yeah, let's do that. So Capricorns, the energy is, well, I should say, you know, Venus is in the house of the eighth house is like Tantra sexual intimacy or kink intimacy. So you may be having some of that going on as well. All right, in your home. <laughs> All right, uh, Aquarius, that's me. I'm Aquarius rising. Okay, Aquarius, sun, moon and rising people. Uh, we have Venus in the seventh house. This is committed love and business partnerships. Like I'm partnering with a fellow female astrologer to teach this course this fall. So there's that. Venus might get me down with her this week to get the more stuff created that we're creating because uh, I ever taught the course once so to create more content together. Um, but partnering in love as well. So when Venus is going through Leo, if you're Aquarius rising, the story is really simple. Make a commit commitment to love. Love the one you're with. The one you're with is loving you up. Love feels good. Commitment, committed love feels good. All right, that's the, the gist of that. And now Jupiter is blowing it all up from the third house of trips and travel, uh, aunts, uncles, cousins, and siblings, um, blowing it up from the house of the online world. If you're a single Aquarius, it could mean meeting someone on, on an online dating site, and it gets committed really fast this week. If you already have someone you're committed to or committing to, this intensifies the commitment. It blows it up and makes it larger and bigger and more spacious. And with that third house, it may involve journeys and travel, may involve emails and letters because it's a house of communication. As you communicate, text, email, phone, call whatever communicating with each other this relationship becomes larger bigger and more committed um, so sweet it really is a lovely energy for a lot of us you know and I just kind of got into something <laughs> yes I've been telling you guys I'm single for a dog's age I'm not single anymore I'm I'm coupled now which is really cool with somebody that I'm exploring that relationship with and you know <laughs> so we'll tell you know how it goes and then um, with Jupiter in the with Jupiter in that third house, this is really about educational opportunities. So let's take it away. Venus could be a female teacher. Jupiter is in the third house of skills-based learning. This is an opportunity for some Aquarians that's going to be aware, you're aware of it this week, right? Especially on the 18th of a lucky opportunity to learn from someone. It's lucky, like, I'm so lucky to get into this class. I'm so lucky this teacher took me on. I'm so lucky this opportunity arose. Okay. 
There's like a couple of astrology classes I've been thinking of taking, but they're taught by men. And I'm not I'm kind of not really down right now for that. So I don't know. I think I'm waiting to see. Maybe there's some kind of new learning I want to take from a female coming up this week. And then lastly, with the pan of intense focus in the house of sexuality, <laughs> eroticism, eros, life force, passion, and romance, fifth house, fun, pleasure. There's a lot of this this week for Aquarius. It's like on like the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, like you're busting out. You're probably doing an orgy. You're probably going full on. You're probably drinking way too much wine or imbibing way too much of whatever you imbibe because it has that ecstatic intensity with pan here. Okay. <laughs> the pandemonium of fun. And it touches down with that seventh house. So you're doing it with someone other. Now, my sister is a Leo and Venus is in the seventh house. So, and I'm traveling with her third house. So, oh yeah, my sister and I are busting out and having a blast of intense ecstatic revelry, play, joy, and fun fun okay but yeah it can also involve if you're talking about relationships a really hot week ahead finally last but not least Pisces Sun Moon and Rising guess what Pisces people you've got Venus moving through your sixth house it's your work house your work routines your work habits your health and your health habits and your where you may want to look at how you undo yourself it's also the house of debt Okay, and so you can have debt relief when Venus moves through there. Suddenly you're able to pay off a debt. The credit card company releases you from debt. Somebody forgives the debt. Someone pays you back money they owe you. Okay, these things can happen. Venus in the sixth house. So she's there and she's there, you know, three weeks or so. But when she's there, right now, in this week ahead, she is forming a loving, holy, yay, opportunity, lucky break energy to the money house where Jupiter is traveling. So for you Pisces, Jupiter is trying to amplify your money and your finances, right? From May of 21 to 22 to 23. And this time, Venus is piping in and going, yay you, Jupiter, let's up-level this person. Uh, some of the real goods in this up-leveling will happen after November 24th when Jupiter goes direct, but still is happening as a little yay moment here this week. So bottom line, it looks like a uptick in your finances connected to your work or connected to something you're doing with your health and health routines that help you in your finances. It can also look like the taking possession of a new possession you need from work, a better computer, a better laptop, uh, you know, a new ergonomic chair, those sorts of things. Um, but it's got luck in it, right? So it's a lucky break. So you can't believe that the chair was half price, it cost so much, or you can't believe that, uh, you know, just by changing this health protocol, you have so much energy, uh, you don't even, you never knew you're going to have so much energy. And now you're able to like kill it in your finances and your earnings because you're not tired all the time. And then pan, ecstasy, deep revelry, uh, obsessive states of, uh, of, of ecstasy or whatever in the fourth house. Well, now pan here, you know, this is an energy where you might feel like, uh, <laughs> you know, in your home private life, you want to go into a kind of a deeper connection to things to do with your calling, your voice, your vocation, your money, your earnings, that second house energy where Jupiter is, and your work habits and routines in your sixth house. So how that might look, I'm not sure, but you can be obsessively focused on redecorating the office, of moving furniture around, of creating a more it's intense space where you can really kill it in the work in the work environment because it pan in your fourth house right is like why are you obsessively focused on something in your home <laughs> all right that's it i can't believe i did it with a piece of paper instead of my charts i can't believe i'm in a garden where it was sunny and now it looks like it's going to rain on me with my iphone propped in the garden so i'll end up this recording don't forget to like and subscribe hit the bell for notifications uh, don't forget to do all of that stuff okay guys this is my sister and brother-in-law's garden in Northern Ontario, Canada. Um, they're, they're starting to take it down a bit. You know, it was much bigger before. I'm also gonna say, uh, I have a Sky Reader course coming. I didn't even promote anything in this video. I'm off my game. The Sky Reader course is coming up. If you want to jump in, there's a wait list. I got 24 people on it. I'm capping this course. I don't want to take more than 40 odd people because I want to be able to teach and get th people through this. It's not, it's got, you got my attention. So that starts in October. Check the link to get on the wait list. Early bird pricing and also you get in because you're on the wait list, you know, before the general public. All right, ciao everybody. I think the camera's over there. What a weird video. Mwah.